All right, problem 27. A couple different ways you could figure this guy out. Um, the quickest way, I think, is to think about the geometric interpretation of multiplying complex numbers. So really all I'm doing here is taking 1 plus i, which is this complex number right here, if this is 1 and this is 1, and multiplying it by itself a bunch of times. And the way you multiply complex numbers, if I multiply this vector times this same vector, is I add these angles. So currently it's a 45 degree angle. I'd add two of these 45 degree angles, which would get me up to 90 degrees. And then I'd multiply their magnitudes. So if I'm gonna multiply this vector by itself 10 times, here it is to the first power. If it's squared, the new angle would be 90 degrees. Third power, fourth power, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. What I'm saying is that my answer is gonna be a vector and the angle of that vector, this thing's gonna be pointing straight up. And the question is, how high up does it get? Well, let's see, do you really even need to figure it out? I don't think you do, because this is a vector. One is a complex number, it's just sitting right here. It's not up here anywhere. That ain't my answer. I, that is on this axis, but that won't be my answer. I'll explain why in a minute. 32 is also on this real axis here, so that would not be the solution. 32i will end up being the solution. I'll explain why in a minute. 32 times i plus 1 is 32i plus 32, so that would be on this ray here which my answer is not. I already figured out that the sum of the angles 10 times 45 degrees is 450 degrees, which is talking about going straight up here. So this can't be my answer either. So it's one of these two guys. So far, we've only looked at the angle. The other thing that you do when you're multiplying complex numbers is you multiply their magnitude. You figure out how long this vector is, and then you multiply that by how long the vector that you're multiplying this thing is. So how long is this guy? Well, it's more than one. How much more than one? It turns out it's root two, but you don't need to know that it's root two. All you need to know is that it's more than one. It's more than one because the distance from here to here is one. So this distance is longer than this distance here. You can make a right triangle and say one, one, therefore this is root two. But the point is not that this distance is root two, is that it's more than one. So if you take a number more than one and multiply that number by itself 10 times, raise it to the 10th power, you're gonna need an answer that's more than one. You ain't gonna get that as your answer. You're gonna get this as your answer. Where did this answer come from, this 32? Well, as I mentioned, this magnitude here is root 10. And if you take, or sorry, it's root two. And that's good, you can use Pythagorean theorem here. This is one, this is one, this is root two. So if you take root two and multiply it by itself 10 times, you're really asking what's root two to the 10th power. That's two to the one half to the 10th, which is two to the fifth, AKA 32. Uh, but my answer is not 32. That's just the magnitude of my vector. Remember the angle is 90 degrees, so it has to be going straight up. So I'm talking about the point on this ray, a distance of 32 away from the origin, I'm talking about 32i. That's one way you can get there. Um, I think that's the quickest way to get there. You could also get there just by kind of looking for a pattern. So you can multiply these guys all out. Um, one plus i to the first power is obviously just one plus i. One plus i squared is one plus two i plus i squared, which is just two i. So therefore one plus i to the third power, that's one plus i times one plus i squared. And one plus i squared I already figured out was two i. So this is just one plus i times two i, which is uh, two i squared, aka negative two, times, sorry, plus two i times one, two i. Um, and you can continue like this looking for a pattern and you'll see it after a little while, one plus i to the fourth power is, I don't know, one plus i squared times one plus i squared, so it's two i times two i, which is four i squared, aka negative four. And then one plus i to the fifth power, I think if you get this far, you'll be able to see the pattern. If you don't already, um, this is negative two times one minus i. Uh, to the fifth power, I get the fourth power times the first power, so I get negative four times one plus i. Uh, and maybe now you can see a little bit of a pattern going on here. Sixth power is gonna end up looking a lot like the second power because I can think about the sixth power as one plus i to the fifth times one plus i instead of one plus i times one plus i. But one plus i to the fifth is a lot like one plus i, it's just got this extra negative four right here. So my answer is gonna be a lot like this guy right here except it's gonna be multiplied by negative four. I'm gonna get negative eight i. And maybe you can kind of see the pattern if you look at these a little bit more neatly. Two, negative two, negative four, negative four, negative eight. Um, you can see what's going on with the coefficients and the vectors. If you look for patterns, the even numbers 
are always either real numbers or purely imaginary numbers. Uh, and it'll be multiples of four that are real numbers and uh, values that are equal to two mod four that are imaginary numbers. So my answer is gonna be an imaginary number, right? I know it's 32. And you can sort of see that this is getting bigger as I get bigger. One plus I to the 10th power is gonna be, well, one plus I to the sixth power times one plus I to the fourth power. So this times this is just 32. So I don't know, maybe pattern wasn't the right way to describe this, but you could do this algebraically as well, probably even quicker than I just did it there, because you don't really need all of these values. I don't know if you ever even need to figure out this one and this one, for example. Um, but at any rate, this is the answer. Quicker if you can get there by thinking about this geometrically.